Hi, this is Drew Tonneson from Dell Technologies. Uh, today I'm going to walk you through migrating a virtual machine from a VMware environment, virtual infrastructure, over to Red Hat's OpenShift um, OCP. Now, the migration is made possible through Red Hat's own migration utility, um, which makes things much easier to do. That doesn't have to be done outside the application. The prerequisites you're going to have to first install the migration kit, which is, comes as part of the virtualization package. Now, this can be done when you do the initial installation through the, the guided installer. There'll be an option to choose a virtualization, and then it will be added automatically. So if I look at my installed operators here, um, I can see an OpenShift virtualization. Let's just get the jump down, but. There it is, OpenShift virtualization. So if you choose to install this, then you will get all the necessary components. If I come down and look at my migration overview, you'll see migration toolkit for virtualization. So this is the namespace that gets created in order to do the migration. And this is just for the, just for the migration. Right? And so what it's going to do is it enables both cold and warm migrations over from VMware. The basis of the of how it does the migration is by using something called the VMware Virtual Disk Development Kit. And the development kit, if I look at my providers here, so um, the vSphere provider I created, there's a VDK init image. Okay. You have to create this image yourself and there's instructions and documentation on how to do this. And then you upload it to the registry in the OCP environment. It's technically not required. Um, you can do migrations without it, but because the VDK offers you the ability to gain access directly into the VMware VDKs, it, it's just much quicker. So um, it will tell you if you don't use it, it can be incredibly slow. Now this is a it's a host-based copy, right? So we're not using any um, uh, external technology. It's not using like the PowerMax snapshot technology or anything like that. This is just a, a host copy through a specialized process that um, Red Hat OpenShift offers. The other prerequisite we need is that when it does the migration, what it's going to do is it's going to move the VMDKs of a virtual machine over into the OCP environment, and then those VMDKs become uh, persistent volumes. Right? So if I come out to my um, environment here, one thing I'm going to need is the PowerMax CSI. Um, so if I get my pods here for my PowerMax, so I've installed the CSI driver here in my environment so that I'm able to use it. In fact, I've actually set the PowerMax as my default storage for everything. So whenever um, OpenShift needs to create any sort of um, storage, uh, PVs, it will do so with um, the PowerMax. So if I look at my, my PVs here, right, you'll see there's a whole bunch of PowerMax ones already created. These are actually for the different images you can use when you're creating virtual machines within an OCP environment. Right. So this is uh, how it's going to create the um, devices for the migration. So let's go over to plans for virtualization. So you create a plan to do a migration. Right? And so we'll just call the plan test. The project MTV is the project. We choose the um, uh, type of um, provider down here. We're, we're using a virtual machine for VMware. And then it will show me all the virtual machines uh, that are in my vCenter. So if, um, this is my vCenter over here. This happens to be the VM I'm going to choose, which is OpenShift Live. But it will show me all of them, um, give me some, you know, depending on you know, what it has in it, you know, do I have change block tracking set? Um, uh, if I get a USB controller, they all give this error. Um, VM running distributed scheduler. These are just warnings. They're not preventing you from doing um, the migrations. The change block 
wood if you want to do a warm migration. So that has to be in there. So let's go down and find our virtual machine, OpenShift Live. So here you can see I have um, the, the secure boot is um, warned here. It's not enabled on this virtual machine. It's just telling you if it is that it's going to um, remove it, but it's not. And then here it's just telling me it used a distributed scheduler. So there's no um, there's no equivalency in the OCP. It's not going to um, uh, be able to do that. It doesn't matter from the migration standpoint. We, we're not worried about that. So I click on the virtual machine that I want to migrate. Hit next. Um, target host provider is 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 host. Um, I'm going to stick it in the same namespace, MTV. I have network mapping, so this is fairly typical of these migration utilities, right? It's got to map it somehow. I'm just going to send this to pod networking and uh, my storage mappings. It's going to show me the available storage classes, right? I have just the one one per power uh, max. This is just a uh, a regular you know, diamond storage class. So there's nothing else here. This is just a single disk, so it's fairly simple. I'm going to create it. And then here's all my details. And what it'll do is it goes through a validation stage um, to make sure, here you can see it's validating. To make sure the VDK image that I've um, uploaded is available so that it actually can do the migration since I told it to use it. Um, and then checks other various um, things that it has to. And here the start button will appear when it validates and then you know you're good to go. So we'll just click start. So this says, oh, do you want to start the cold migration, right? Because cold migration is the default. Um, so we don't want to do that. So we're going to cancel that. And we're going to come down and look at the plan and see the migration type has defaulted to cold. I find this kind of strange. And the reason I'm doing this is pointing out the fact that the virtual machine was running. So you think the migration type would be warm by default, but it's cold. <laughs> so it doesn't matter whether the machine's running or not, it's going to set it to cold. So here we're going to do set it to warm, we're going to save it, and now we're going to start the migration. And warm migration, yes, please. And now the plan will um, begin executing. So I click on the plans, you can see here I'm running. You can see this button here we're going to, to deal with after, which is the cutover, which uh, I mentioned is when it's going to have to shut down the source virtual machine to move things over. If I click on the machine itself, I will get the ability to look at the detail. Okay, So I have um, disk transfer information. So this here you'll see is going to, as this moves over here, you can see it'll start transferring data. If I come back out to here and let's look at the let's look at the PVs again. Oops, go too far. So right here now I have this one here, this MTV 50 gig, which is the size of my VMDK, right? And so now it has created this in order to do the migration. So the migration is. Um, ongoing from this point. So we'll pop back. You will see, by the way, you're not going to see um, anything here within VMware except the creation of the snapshot. So it's going to create a snapshot in VMware in order for the change um, block tracking, right? So that it can, so that it knows what to copy over after. So the disk transfer here is going to take some time. It's a host copy. Um, once the disk transfer completes, it will get to the point where we can issue the cutover. And the cutover will be able to either plan the cutover um, or set it to go uh, immediately. And then the cutover process 
can take as long as the amount of data that's changed. So for this environment, it'll be fairly quick because we're not touching the production environment. So we can see here, as far as the disk transfer, it says it's completed the amount. We've got two green dots here, right? So if I look down here, transfer disk is complete. And at this point now, because this is done, right, I can come back out to the plans and I can issue the cutover, um, either planning it to go immediately or deciding to schedule it into into the future. So I click on that. The time on my system you can't see, but it's 722. Set cover, cutover, remove cutover. So I can set the cutover and just tell it to, to go immediately. So, so you can see here, we're starting that next process. So you can see here the cutover, the screen keeps refreshing, so <laughs> it does that to me. So our third dot here has gone green. So the cutover has completed. And then it will do some image conversions and then complete the virtual machine creation on, on this side on OCP. I now have a pod as opposed to just a PV. So here I have my test VM, which is running. Found PV created successfully. And pop over to VMware. You can see here's the shutdown that had to be done and the removal of the snapshots that it used to um, do the change block tracking um, data. So we've made it to all green here, all five green, succeeded, great VM, all done. So I should be able to come out on the left hand side here to my virtual machines and see that I have one running. And it shows me which node it's running on my cluster. And if I want to open the web console, I can do that too. And so there it is. Yep. So surely not the fastest migration there. Uh, that you've ever seen, but um, uh, it is able to move it cold or warm and get you coming from, you know, a VMware environment over to OCP if that is your desire to move um, virtualization infrastructures.